Ladies and gentlemen, last couple of sections, 419 and 420, are on buffer solutions. A buffer either resists a change in pH or minimizes the change in pH when an acid or base is added. What a buffer is designed to do is, is keep the pH of whatever system it's in at that certain pH, and it, and it will stop it from shooting straight down or shooting straight up if an acid or base is added. The buffer we're going to use in our notes is based off of its of the weak acid, um, acetic acid. And a buffer system always exists between the weak acid and its conjugate weak base. So to make a buffer, you have to have approximately the same concentration of weak acid and weak base. Well, to do that, you have to add its conjugate pair. You have to add its weak base. Because if you just let acetic acid ionize on its own, it's only going to ionize like 2%, which means 98% of this equilibrium will be the initial weak acid, and 2% of this equilibrium will be its conjugate base. We don't want that. We want equal parts acid and base. So to make a buffer is very simple. You're going to start with a weak acid, this one, and then you're going to add its conjugate pair. You want to add enough conjugate pair until the concentrations are about the same. And a new equilibrium is going to be formed in which the weak acid and its conjugate base is approximately the same. Now it has the ability to shift left and shift right equally, counteracting any change. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So to start off, understand that there are two kinds of buffers. You can start off with a weak acid and add its conjugate base, or you can start off with a weak base and add its conjugate acid. If you start off with a weak acid, you are going to be able to buffer in the ranges of maybe 3 to 6. Again, that's like the acidic side of the pH scale. If you're starting with a weak base and you're making a weak base buffer, you're going to be able to sort of buffer in the pH range of maybe 7, maybe 8 to 11. Again, that's the basic region on the pH scale. I have to stress that you cannot make a buffer with strong acids and strong bases for the simple fact that they do not um, form an equilibrium. They ionize 100%, they're done. There is no equilibrium with strong acids and strong bases. So you can only make a buffer with the weak acid and its conjugate base or the weak base and its conjugate acid. So how does it actually work? Well, let's pretend that this is our buffer right here. Okay, This buffer is an equilibrium with a weak acid and its conjugate base. You'll notice that the concentrations of the weak acid and the weak base are approximately equal, 0.1. So this has the ability to shift left and right. So let's make it shift left and right. Let's, I'll show you exactly how this buffer works. First off, if I add HCl, what's going to happen is H3O plus is going to skyrocket in concentration. This buffer says, this buffer is an equilibrium, an equilibrium from LCP, all the way back from chapter 2, says it's going to counteract your change. So when H3O plus increases, we are very good at knowing it's going to shift left. And what's going to happen next? The concentration of H3O is going to decrease, almost to, the where, almost to where it was before. So I added some HCl. This buffer resisted the change by shifting left, by counteracting, by bringing this concentration of H3O plus back down to where it was. So we graphed a bunch of these in chapter 2, and we'll graph them again here in chapter 4. At equilibrium, the concentration of H3O was constant. I added a bunch of HCl, H3O spiked up, came back down, not quite to the original line. Again, this buffer is resisting the change when I add an acid. The exact same, exact same thing happens when I add a base. If I add NaOH, NaOH is going to remove H3O plus from equilibrium. This equilibrium has the ability to shift right to undo my change. So when it undoes my change, it's going to bring H3O back up, but not quite to the original line. In essence, resisting the change in pH when a base is added. So I can add a strong acid, I can add a strong base to this buffer. And this buffer maintains a relatively constant pH because it's resisting my change. Let's try this again. This time we're going to do it with a basic buffer. 
I'm starting off with a weak base and I'm adding its conjugate pair weak acid. Remember Cl minus is a spectator. So what equilibrium is going to be formed here? NH3 plus H2O is going to accept a proton, NH4 plus, and OH minus. That's the equilibrium when I have equal concentrations of those weak acid and weak base pairs. So if I add a strong acid, this strong acid is going to remove OH minus very, very quickly. So this concentration decreases. And when I add a strong acid, the pH is going to go down. But this equilibrium has the ability to shift to undo my change. So if I am, let me change my colors. If I am removing OH minus, equilibrium is going to shift right. So as a result, equilibrium shifts to the right. The concentration of OH minus gradually increases, and that pH will go back up to where it used to be. So in essence, it resisted that change. It minimized the change in pH. As a result of adding HCl, there was a small, small net decrease in OH minus and a small net decrease in pH. Not a huge increase because this equilibrium resisted that change. Okay, let's do it exactly, let's do it again, but opposite. Let's look at these things in terms of graphs this time, not nice sentences. OH minus was constant. I added HCl, it's going to remove it instantaneously. Equilibrium is going to shift, undo my change, not quite back to the original line. If I was going to graph pH, it's going to be constant at equilibrium. When I add HCl, it's going to decrease, it's going to become more acidic. And equilibrium is, when it's changing, it's going to counteract that, but not quite back up to the original line. So whether I'm giving this to you in graph form or sentence form, I think you're, you're all going to catch on to this very, very quickly. Third chapter in a row with equilibrium shifts. Let's do it one more time. We're going to start off with the same equilibrium, weak base. This conjugate pair of weak acid is going to be added. The Cl is a spectator. Equilibrium is going to be NH3 plus. H2O, double arrow. It's going to make OH minus and NH4 plus. This time, we're going to add a strong base. When I add a strong base, the OH minus is going to increase very quickly. When the OH minus increases in concentration quickly, the pH is going to go up. Again, as a result of adding any OH, OH minus goes up. Equilibrium is going to shift left to undo my change. This buffer is resisting the change when I add a strong base. So it's shifting left. The OH gradually decreases, and that pH is going back down to where it used to be. Okay? Again, there's a small net uh, increase in the amount of OH minus, and a small net increase in pH. The keywords there are small, though, everybody. You're adding a strong base to this system, but it's resisting its change. So if I'm graphing these things, OH is going to be constant, then it's going to spike up, come back down not quite to the original line. Same with pH. pH is going to be constant. It's going to spike up, come back down, right back to the original line. There's a small net increase in pH when you add a strong base. So the whole point of this, the whole idea of a buffer, is in summary, this buffer resists the change in pH when a small amount of acid or base is added. You can also say it maintains the pH when a small amount of acid or base is added. But these buffers can't work forever. If you eat a large meat lover's pizza and slam it back with a big two liter bottle of Coke, that's way too much acid for any simple buffer to, to, uh, to handle. So in your body, your buffers are going to get overwhelmed, you're going to get heartburn, you're going to get ulcers, you're going to get sick. So there are limitations to buffers. You can't expect this thing to shift forever to the left or forever to the right. Eventually, this buffer will become overwhelmed. There's a limitation to this buffer, and it just can't shift anymore. Um, after that point, it's useless, and then your pH is going to skyrocket up if you're adding an, a base, or it's going to skyrocket down if you're adding an acid. This is the second time we've mentioned this, if you, if you've catched, if you caught on to that. 
in a titration curve, that's the buffer region. And right there is when it becomes overwhelmed. This buffer can resist and resist and resist and resist and resist. And eventually there's just nothing it can do. pH skyrockets when it becomes overwhelmed. Um, there's a lot of uses for buffers. You can give these a read. There's some interesting things to talk about here, maybe tomorrow in class. Um, so maybe we'll leave it at that.